Hey, how's it going, everybody? My name is Magnum Martell, and welcome back to another glorious episode of Magnum Reviews! <laughs> Today, we're going to be reviewing none other than the remake of the 2005 cult classic Destroy All Humans. I loved this game growing up. I did. I really did. I replayed some of the original versions available through, uh, backwards compatibility on Xbox, and I forgot how outdated it was. I, I did it in preparation um, for this game's release. And I just want to say, don't worry about the gameplay that you're going to be seeing here on your screen. It's all completely spoiler-free. It's actually from my live stream, which if you haven't viewed my Twitch channel, please go uh, go do. It's actually available there at the time this video is being produced, but it won't be there much longer. Those, those things only stay up temporarily. But so don't worry, it's just me playing around the free roam environment of, like, the first area, early game footage, dicking around, doing whatever the hell I please. So, you don't actually have to worry about any spoilers in the gameplay here. But I just want to start off by saying that as someone who grew up with this game, as someone who played the fuck out of the original and its multiple sequels, I absolutely love it so far. I'm, I'm not even gonna lie to you, it's not perfect. Not by any means, no game is, but I'm going to try and give you, an, at least my opinion, and mostly objective look here at the game. So, essentially the game starts off by telling you that, almost as if it's a retelling, uh, a historical reimagining of exactly what happened, telling you that the original invasion of uh, Earth by the Furon Empire is mostly the same, and it is. Um, the opening level, I'm not even going to lie to you, the opening level of the game legitimately plays out exactly the same as the original. They did a great job recreating most of the stuff and making it look very pretty. It does have a very cartoony environment, but it's something that's easy to accept for the type of game that you're playing. And the thing I love most about this game by far is the comedy. This series has always had very childish, very raunchy, but always very well done comedy. And the remake is no exception. The remake recreates most of the original comedy and the jokes, so much so that games journalists now are actually mad at this game. And I, I gotta say, I'm not surprised. This game ticks all the boxes of everything they don't like. It makes raunchy jokes, it makes racist jokes, it makes jokes about people being stupid, it makes jokes about humans being monkeys. It presents itself in a way that you are the alien. You are Cryptosporidium invading the Earth, looking for the previous clone of himself. The story is exactly the same, too. The, the original Destroy All Humans story was never phenomenal. Not by any means. It was a basic story about the alien crash in Roswell, New Mexico, back in the 50s, and it turns out that that alien was Crypto, and one of his clones, being that um, the Furon Empire uses cloning, as they can no longer procreate due to the war they had with the Martians. Um, coming to Earth, essentially to find his clone and take action while gathering human DNA in an attempt to uh, save their their species, the Furons, basically. And it's about crypto getting mixed up in a plot with the federal United States government back in the 50s and all this other stuff. It's a great series. It's a story that you have to experience, but the story isn't why you come. You come for the gameplay. The gameplay is good, stupid fun. You get all kinds of crazy gadgets and weapons, and you can even fly around in Crypto's spaceship and just destroy all humans like the title says. It's such a phenomenal game. You know, Resident Evil 2 last year reset, or what was it, two years ago now, set the precedent for what a remake should be. A reimagining of the original with updated controls and graphics and improvements with minor changes, and you know what, while that game wasn't perfect by any means, and 3 was certainly not that great, which I did review it myself, Destroy All Humans feels like it ticked all the right boxes. They've updated the controls, they have updated the sound quality, they have updated the graphics very heavily, while still keeping what made the original fun. Just the mindless, callous, wanton destruction of the human race. The comedy is certainly on point. Like I said, they make a lot of raunchy jokes. They make a lot of different outcries. They just... Crypto just wants to blow stuff up. He is the embodiment of the way we play video games with open-world environments and callous destruction. 
he he wants to come down to the planet, kill things and blow stuff up. And he even has a scene early on in the game where he says, "When do I get to blow things up?" It's great. But okay, okay, I'm I'm rambling and gushing over how much I love this game. So, its strong suits are definitely in its gameplay, like I said. It updates the controls, they added new things like the dash that you're seeing me use here on screen, they added a new function called skate, which basically crypto hops on what is basically an invisible skateboard. But they also remove some of the uh, limitations of the original. For example, when using crypto's telekinesis ability, you no longer have a limit to how long you can hold things in the air like the original. Uh, when using his disguise function to disguise himself as a person, the original, it just, it went by how much energy you have, and doing actions immediately dispelled it. Now they've changed it so that it runs on a timer, and you'd have to essentially scan someone's mind to increase the timer and reset it back to zero, and you can still use your powers while doing it. I feel like that's a huge improvement over the original, and I, <laughs> I love what they did with it. When it comes to the upgrade system and the gadgets, essentially what you do is you get your hands on human brains and you spread the DNA to upgrade your spacecraft, your weapons, and your abilities. And you know what? I think they do a good job of it. The upgrades seem a little pricey early on, but you get the hang of them. There's plenty to do. Plenty to do and see. There's multiple small open world environments. The one you'll be seeing here in the gameplay is Turnip Seed Farm. It's the very first one you go to. Then there's uh, Rockwell, and then there's Roswell, there's Area 51, which they call 42 in this game. Um, there's a lot of different environments that you can go to just to dick around, and there's a lot of optional objectives, like there's races and saucer and missions where you use the saucer. There's a good variety of gameplay here. I feel like the gameplay is where Destroy All Humans has always shined, where it will always shine. And I feel like they did a great job bringing back what made the original fun while still updating it for a modern audience. The thing to understand about this game is that it's not for the faint of heart or the easily offended. You do kill things, you do blow things up, you do probe human minds. I mean, one of your weapons is literally an anal probe. That you shoot it into them, and they run around, and then their head explodes and you collect their brain. That, that is the gameplay of this game. This is not a game for someone who is easily triggered by usage of certain words that you need to remember were acceptable back in 2005. Back then, people said those words casually. And... and I th honestly, I love the fact that they didn't shy away from that. They didn't try to make this game uh, politically correct. They didn't care to. They didn't try to change and alter things for the people that won't like it. They wanted to bring it back so that the original fans could revisit it and love every second. And so far, I do. So far, I've loved every moment of, of the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay. There's plenty of action, plenty of comedy, plenty of mission design... Plenty of things to do and see, and I haven't even finished the game. I do fully intend on Let's Playing it. Its biggest flaw by far is that it takes a little getting used to. It doesn't use the same extremely outdated controls of the 2005 original, but the controls are similar enough that they will feel a little alien, <laughs> for, pardon the pun, pun not intended, to a modern player or to someone who didn't experience them back in the day. At a $40 price tag, I have to say that Magnum Martell definitely recommends this game. So far, I have loved every moment of it. I plan on live-streaming it after I'm done with this video today, actually, because I just, I love this game so much. It's so much fun. It's good, old-fashioned fun, and you just, you can't beat that. I have to say, I would give this Destroy All Humans, this remake, a solid 9 out of 10. Because I don't believe that any game is truly a perfect score deserving, but in this case, this is as close as you get. If I had to slap a numerical number on here. If you're a fan of the original Destroy All Humans, I highly recommend you check this one out. If you've never played the original, well then, I recommend even more that you check this one out. Because it truly is a game that you're going to love. And you know, I hope that this game is successful. I hope that they decide to remake Destroy All Humans 2, which is arguably my favorite of the entire franchise, and even revisit some of the other titles, or better yet, com completely continue the story in a different direction. You should make a Destroy All Humans 3. I want this game to succeed, and I highly recommend to anyone who wants to pick it up, whether you be a fan of the original or someone new who's just looking for a good old-fashioned fun experience where you play as an alien with crazy gadgets and weapons and you blow shit up. 
Thanks for watching, everybody. My name is Magnum Martel. Please leave a like if you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next episode.